Welcome to Pro Floors TV. In this episode, Divot Shower Mud Pan. Subscribe for pro videos. So what I'm holding in my hand at this moment is a template I created using the bottom of a bucket. And I found this at Home Depot because this drain right here, the circumference size of it, it's exactly eight inches so whether you're using a six inch drain or a four inch drain you'll need a perfect size template to set over the drain now this bucket that i've used is exactly eight inches and it fits perfectly from edge to edge over my drain now that we have the perfect template with the right circumference time to cut the height of this template and in order to determine the height of this template we must know what the shower floor slope requirement is you can always ask a gc to find out what that slope requirement is or if you don't have a particular slope requirement you could always go with a typical quarter inch slope per foot Foot. so in this case from the wall to my drain i have two feet in length so a quarter inch per foot equals a half inch drop between these two feet so now that we figured out the most important which is a half inch drop i can go ahead and find the right size to cut my template which is approximately in this case two inches in height but every shower will be different. Some showers could be recessed deeper or not as deep. Some drains could be set low or too high, which makes the template a different size. Therefore, it's important that you find the correct size height for your template before you start this divot shower pan method. Now that we have the perfect size template for this divot method, we will proceed with the shower mud pan as usual. Before I start on all my shower mud pans, whether it's a divot method or not, I always apply a thin coat of thin set mortar on the surface so that the sand mix mud bonds better to the concrete. This also helps to avoid any hollow when the sand mix is all set and done. That being said, I will continue to finish mud packing the shower floor as I would any other shower with the slope already set. Notice that I filled the template with sand mix and added a few nails over the top so I can easily pull when needed. Next, find something to cover the drain or a drain plug so that you don't have any debris or sand mix falling down the drain. Now we put the four bolts back in so that sand mix don't fall in any of these holes. Guys, for the main event, the divot structure around this drain and coordinating yeah, with water. The fabric fell on a steep drop like that, it won't work. It's impossible. So you want to do this at an angle. And we'll use this tool for now. I start off by using the putty knife, the three-in-one painter's tool, and start removing some of the mud's sharp edge around the drain. However, this won't reach all the way to the rim, so I'll bring my trowel for that. I like to use my trowel, the point, the point cart, right at the edge of the rim. Right at the edge of the rim. See that? Right at the edge of the rim. As you work in the divot structure, you want to keep the mud on the outer rim of the drain. You don't want to go over the drain and you don't want to be far past the drain. It has to be right on the edge of that rim. Also, as you're working the angle of this structure, you have to make sure that it's not that steep. So if you could possibly go a little further or no less than 45 degrees, you should be fine. And this is because you want to make sure that the fracture-free fabric will fold into the drain without the need of having too many relief cuts and also avoiding uh, air pockets, such as this example right here. The fracture-free fabric on this one has air pockets. They couldn't make it sit smoothly with the angle of the structure. And this example on the right it looks a lot better, it's a lot smoother, and they were able to do the relief cuts and fold it in with no air pockets whatsoever. So that's it, I finished scraping off the angle of this divot structure. Now I am using my hands to basically finish molding it and making the sand mix smooth. Cause if you don't make it smooth, it will dry rough on the 
basically on everything that you scraped off will dry rough you want to make it smooth i patten it down uh using my hands just smoothing it out of course i have gloves on and so now the sand mix will be a lot smoother because we're taking in consideration that we got to waterproof this and if we don't make this smooth then the uh, sand the sand mix it'll, it'll get really sandy really rough and you don't want that on your waterproofing you just want it to be nice and smooth and that's it we're basically done now we're just vacuuming up cleaning up the rest of this sand mix and this is what it looks like completed and it looks great the divot angle perfect now once you have the red guard all set and done by the way check out the videos i have on red guard and this divot pan now to complete you want to add thin set on the side wall of the divot so that the sand mix bonds better to that red guard next you want to add a few pea gravels over the weep poles of the drain not as much as this picture but yeah then the sand mix you want to make sure you pack it good and you want to set the height of the drain perfect to fit to your shower floor before the sand mix obviously dries by the way if you like this video like it if y'all want more subscribe pro floors tv got more videos on the making